You may wonder what I'm doing standing outside the school and looking at this flag flying half mast. But in the last couple of days has been the most dramatic event, well, taken place. I say the most dramatic probably since 9-11, and that's the most people killed by a single gunman. And the young man in, in question, or the person in question, was a young man uh, on a college campus. And what disturbed me in reading some of the reports is that he was clearly suffering from depression and had been for many years. Um, and he was on antidepressants. So in this month's DVD, what I want to talk about is, I'm going to touch on depression, but I really want to talk at the side effects of antidepressants. Um, and look at some natural ways that you can actually help to combat depression. Uh, starting with one of them is just natural light. And one of the things that I notice here in the sunny Southern California is that whenever we go for a walk, everybody's wearing sunglasses on their eyes. There's this obsession with blocking the light from your eyes. And one of the quickest ways to actually get rid of depression and to not have to take antidepressants, and the cheapest way to do it is to start exercising. And so I suggest that one of the first things you start doing is get outside, start walking, uncover your eyes, wear a hat if you're worried about the sun, stay out of peak midday sun if the sun concerns you. The time here now is about um, half past six in the evening and uh, the sun is still up and I'm still being exposed to natural sunlight. And this is the kind of sunlight that helps to regulate melatonin and serotonin levels in your body. You've got a little gland behind the eyes called the pineal gland, and that gland produces melatonin and serotonin. It will produce too much in the daytime if you're not exposed to natural light. And if you're producing too much, you get pretty depressed, you're very tired, you've got no energy, and you're not going to produce enough serotonin. And serotonin is what makes you sleep well at night and keeps you happy. So one of the most quickest and most efficient ways to get rid of depression naturally is to get outside, as I said, start moving and get natural light. Exercise is best done outside. And if you want to go to the gym, let that be extra exercise. You need roughly 20 to 30 minutes a day of exercise and sunlight at the same time without any glasses on. That includes no contact lenses or prescription lenses. If you're as blind as a bat without your glasses and cannot see where you're walking, either take your guide dog with you or sit outside on your veranda with a, with a hat on and you don't have to look at the sun, you certainly don't have to look at it, you just have to be outside. Ultraviolet rays are needed by the pineal gland to regulate those two neurotransmitters, melatonin and serotonin. We'll go and look at some other methods and, and what we can do and some of the research showing what antidepressants do to your body and what they can cause, what kind of strange behavioral problems they could cause. And it may just prevent you doing something crazy, not as crazy as obviously as the Virginia Tech gunman, but well, maybe it does, who knows? Let's go and take a look. This issue of antidepressants is very, very depressing. I mean, it really is. I mean, we look here in the, in the United States, over 200 million, probably more than that by now, because that was last year's statistics. In fact, it's 2005 statistics. Over 200 million people a year are taking antidepressants. Of those 200 million people, over 2 million of them are children. And we now have the Food and Drug Administration telling us that uh, th that antidepressants should be prescribed with caution because they found that it causing serious suicidal behavior in children. So what I want to just cover is some of the the major side effects that you find. I mean, besides the fact that something like Prozac, now there's not one antidepressant that doesn't cause side effects. I mean, Paxil, for example, causes all kinds of problems. And if we take a look at the side effects, you know, of something like um, Paxil, we could say mood changes, anxiety, panic attacks, trouble sleeping, irritability, agitation, aggressive, severe restlessness, mania, thoughts of suicide or hurting yourself, heart defects, life-threatening lung problems in newborn babies whose mothers take medicine during pregnancy. However, you may have a relapse of depression if you stop taking your antidepressant during pregnancy. 
I mean, you just can't win once you've started with this stuff. I just really must encourage you to look for other solutions. And we're going to look at some of them, okay? Let's just take a some of the look at some of the side effects that Prozac has on the brain and the central nervous system. This is what really worries me. It has an effect on the, the body on the whole. Chest pains, chills, and frequent chills, uh, swelling in the face, tiredness, pelvic pain, um, abdominal syndrome, cardiovascular hemorrhage, hypertension, palpitation. I mean, you can go on. You can just get on the internet and have a look at all the side effects. But when we're talking about depression, and behavioral problems and this is what concerns me you put somebody that's clearly out of balance clearly not functioning properly onto an antidepressant and you could have any of these agitation amnesia confusion emotional uh, um, instability sleep disorder um, abnormal gait acute brain syndrome acasthenia apathy ataxia central nervous system depression Central nervous system stimulation, depersonalization, euphoria, hallucin hallucinations, hostility, hyperkinesia, which is continual moving, just sort of hyperactivity and fiddling, um, hypertonia, hypesthesia, incoordination. This all has to do with the central nervous system in the brain. Libido increased. You know, this guy that was taking these antidepressants that killed all these people here in, in the, in, in, at the Virginia Tech was also stalking female students. Um, Neuro neuropathy, neurosis, paranoid reaction, personality disorder, psychosis, vertigo, abnormal electrocephalogram, antisocial reaction, coma, delusions, um, goodness sake, neuritis, paralysis, reflex decreased, reflexes increased, stupor, and this is just in the central nervous system, and this is a drug that's supposed to be a cure for depression. I mean, you know, just things like respiratory system, inf uh, as asthma, hiccups, hyperventilation, emphysema. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Urogenital system, special senses, it affects everything. It actually says in a block at the bottom on the, and, of, of, of the actual you know, website of the drug company, antidepressants increase the risk of suicidal thinking and behavior in children and adolescents with depression and other psychiatric disorders. So why prescribe it? In fact, this is Prozac, which is the only drug that's allowed to be prescribed or in kind of said that it's okay as far as the Food and Drug Administration goes. They're saying Prozac's the only drug that can be prescribed for children. And here it says children and adolescents with depression and other psychi psychiatric disorders, it can increase the risk of suicidal thinking and behavior. Patients starting therapy should be observed closely for worsening depression symptoms, suicidal thoughts or behavior, or unusual changes in behavior. It's approved for use in patients under the age of 18. Now you go figure that one out. This is not a cure. I mean, there's so much you can do, and I know, because I suffered from manic depression. I know manic depression is not the only form of depression, but I have yet to find somebody whose state of mind does not improve dramatically with sunlight, with exercise, with a healthy diet, getting the caffeine out, getting the alcohol out, taking control of your life by saying, what is my purpose? What is the point of my life here? Starting to talk to God. You need to have a purpose. Children need to have a purpose. They need to know why they're here. If they just think they're here so that they can make more money like their mom and dad and drive better cars and live in a bigger house and one with bigger windows like we've got up there. I mean, that's a nice flashy house that you've got over there. You know, if, if, and people don't even live there. I mean, I've walked past that house every morning for the last two months and there's nobody living in that house. What's the point? If that's your sole purpose in life, to accumulate things, no wonder kids are depressed if that's what they think the rest of their life is about. If, if that's what they've got to look forward to, it's just working and working and working and working and accumulating stuff. We have a purpose. Whether it's to be a mother or a wife or a father or, a, you know, to look after orphans or widows, to... Um, there are so many children that don't have parents. There are so many people that have serious problems that we can help. That can be your purpose, is helping other people with the same problems as you. If your purpose is just to focus on yourself and your illnesses and your problems, you're going to be in trouble. Now, let me take a look at some of this research from the FDA. You can log on to the Food and Drug Administration website, which is um, you know, FDA, I think it is, .org. This information that I got from here is from the FDA site, but it's written in the you know, Washington Post, which is WashingtonPost.com. Although only one of these drugs has been approved for the treatment of children with depression, doctors are prescribing them to hundreds and thousands of American children every year. It's not hundreds and thousands, it's actually over two million. 
Now it says that the U uh, FDA, the Food and Drug Administration analysis of the trials is starkly at odds with repeated assurances by the US psychiatric establishment that the drugs are safe. Now, I don't know whether the, you, you, you know, the psychiatric establishment has shares in the pharmaceutical industry. They probably have. There's not one pharmaceutical company that not a listed company on the stock exchange. They have to make profits. So they've probably got every you know, person prescribing it in their pockets. I mean, it says patients and impassioned families pleaded for more urgent action at a day-long meeting of an expert advisory panel yesterday. We were told that Paxil and Prozac were wonder drugs, said Glenn McIntosh of Austin, whose daughter, Caitlin, 12, hanged herself with shoelaces weeks before being started, after being started on Paxil and then being switched to Zoloft. We were lied to. They don't have a daughter anymore because she went on this drug. Now, you know, I don't want to blame the parents, but as a parent, I would think the first thing you look at is what's wrong with my child's lifestyle or diet? Is there anything in their diet? Number one, refined sugar would cause depression. Lack of essential fatty acids would cause depression. Lack of exercise. If the kid is just sitting in front of television and never exercising. If the child's living on junk food, that is going to cause depression. That is a known fact. There's no argument about this stuff anymore. Most doctors believe that drugs, collectively known as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRI, save the lives of many depressed children. Top researchers have warned of dire consequences if the use in children is banned. What are the top researchers? Where are they from? Pharmaceutical companies, of course. And here we're dealing with serotonin. How do you get serotonin? Get out in the sunlight. Everybody's keeping their kids indoors because they're worried about natural light. They just happy that they're sitting in front of the computer because they think they're safer there but they're getting depressed and taking their own lives so instead of you know they're nervous about them playing outside in the park because they think you know somebody's going to abduct them but they're taking their own life i mean it doesn't make any sense one company wyeth has warned american doctors not to prescribe its drug effexor to children gary cheslick of fixburg mississippi who said his son Justin hanged himself after taking Paxil, noted that the data that pr prompted Wyeth's warning had been available for years. It had been available for years, and only then did they put the warning on. I, I just don't understand this. That we've got to actually start doing something drastic about it. Many families questioned why neither the company nor the FDA had acted earlier. I wonder why. Did money have anything to do with it? Increasingly, American doctors have come to rely on drugs. Officials said yesterday 2.1 million prescriptions for antidepressants were written for children in 2002. It's 2007, 2000, five years later, and we still don't have updated data. In all the trials, children with similar levels of depression were randomly chosen to receive either drugs or dummy pills. These were the trials they did. There were 109 who were reported to have made at least one suicide attempt or at least suicidal thoughts after taking a drug. Now, these children were screened specifically to make sure that there was no suicidal behavior, no suicidal thoughts before they took the drugs. So this is one of the things I find interesting. They were screened, they had no suicidal tendencies whatsoever. The company screened these children, okay? Of the 109 children, 66 harmed themselves. Among them, 19 cut themselves. 37 took overdoses of pills. Two children tried to hang themselves. There was one case of self-burning. The last three suicide attempts were halted by alert caregivers. 47 were hospitalized, but none committed suicide. David Healy, a Welsh, sorry, a Welsh psychiatrist who has campaigned for more, than the more careful use of medicines, estimated that about 500 American children have already taken their own lives as a result of antidepressants. Irving Kirsch and other critics said the vast majority of clinical trials had failed to show that the drugs made patients any better than the dummy pills or placebos. Even when the medicines worked, he estimated that 87% of the benefit derived from the patient's belief that they were effective, a phenomenon known as the placebo effect. Now let me tell you, there is so much more you can do. You know, I could say, start anywhere, but if you want to start in a place that has got some pretty sensible advice, and it's my own book, Mark and I wrote it, but it's after years of not only suffering from depression, but having got rid of it for the last 25 years, dealt with people over the years, hundreds, possibly thousands of people who've got rid of depression, not had to be on medication. I'm not suggesting you throw your drugs out the window. Do this wisely. Get weaned off your medication. Get the help of your doctor. If your doctor doesn't want to take you off it, find a doctor that will. There are doctors that care enough, that know that antidepressants are not the solution. 
This book, Take Control, is probably the best book Mark and I have ever written. If you're living in the United States, get onto our website and order it. If you're in a country like South Africa or the UK, you can order it directly from the AIM companies. Um, get onto our website and find out where you can order it. Most of the stores in South Africa stock it. But it's really about taking control of the things in your life that you can and letting go of the things that you cannot. And one of the things you can take control of is your mind. And as I said earlier, you can take control of it with exercise, with spiritual well-being, knowing who you are, knowing who God is in your life, knowing what your purpose is in life. There are two very detailed chapters in here on your mind and your food and your mind and your lifestyle. And I cover every possible food and every possible lifestyle habit that could possibly affect your mind. I also cover what the side effects of antidepressants are and it's something that I feel you should be, you know, every family, if there's any history of mood swings, behavioral problems, aggression, strange behavior, anything like that, read this book. I'm begging you, if you don't read it, at least get on the website and look at the side effects of the drugs. But if you're going to take control of your life, you need to know how to do it, where to start. You may find your financial state is, is causing problems. Well, this book tells you how to take control of your finances. It tells you how to take control of how to make sure you're getting enough natural light, how to make sure you're getting the right kind of exercise. Just please, I beg you, do something that doesn't involve medication and drugs, if possible. There are so many other things you can do. Don't just not take the drugs. You can't just eat rubbish and do anything you want to and not take the medication. You've got to be active and take control of your life. Um, you know, other than actually begging with you anymore, I, I, I don't really know what to say. I just know that when people have done what I've suggested they do here, their lives have changed dramatically and for the best.